The analysis of the computing project is the first section that you'll undertake. The analysis section should provide the reader with a detailed understanding of your project equal to your own. The analysis of the situation and problem you choose should be as extensive and rigorous as possible. You'll probably be doing this for the first time, but you'll only get one chance to collect all of the information that you need, so you must prepare carefully and proceed with care. You need to use formal techniques in your documentation and you may need to spend time turning observations, interviews and thoughts into more structured analysis and diagrams. With your end client what you need to think of is how are you going to get this information. These formal techniques will be things such as interviewing your end client, interviewing workers or other people that belong to the group or organisation. Uh, this could be questionnaires, could be observations of the current system and collecting existing information. As part of the analysis you need to identify the prospective user. For example, is it the receptionist and manager at the taxi company? Is it the driver? Is it a shop worker? Is it just the management? Is it a hairdresser? Is it the beauty technician? Who are they? Then ascertain the user's needs. What do they need a computer system for? If they don't have any needs, then why are you proposing one? This isn't your suggestion of what you would like to produce, but is what they need. You must specify and document the data flow and the processing requirements for the system using all the appropriate techniques. You need to identify the needs for development and maintenance of the system and you're going to establish what data requirements there are and a full conceptual data model which includes a data dictionary and document any mathematical algorithms such as calculations. Other techniques you'll use data flow diagrams and entity relationship models. Specific techniques of analysis include observations, interviews, document searches, meetings, questionnaires. All of these take time and preparation and must be done to a high standard. Don't rely on informal chats or guesswork. You need to start early and give yourself plenty of time to reflect and produce good quality material. In advance of any interview, make sure you prepare questions. Make sure these are not open, not closed questions and they are open-ended. What are the objectives? What is the input? What is the process? What are the output? What's data? Exceptions? Errors? Security? Constraints? What are the solutions that you want? Record the interview as notes or on, pe or on tape and write them up carefully. Take a dictaphone if you need to. Record it on your phone. Video this if you need to take somebody with you to help capture these notes. This is part of the project and part of the analysis. You need a record of all this information. Document all your findings. Rewrite them using systems terminology. Inputs, process, outputs, problems, requirements, limitations. Do not underestimate this requirement stage. Read the specification carefully re-listen to this video, look at the mark scheme, look at what you're being assessed on and make sure you have a full understanding of this analysis before you get started. The analysis sets the mark for the rest of your project. Be sure to do enough research with your client. You only get one chance at this. Use all the methods you can. Do not just rely on one single interview or one single questionnaire. These are the aspects that you will be assessed on. Overall the analysis is out of 12 marks. The way the project falls is that whatever your maximum mark you get in your analysis is, this sets the scene for the rest of your project. For example, if in your analysis you get between 10 and 12 marks, that is what is available to you for every other task. If your analysis you only get 3 marks, then you are 
in the lower mark boundary your project might be classed as a simple project or not adequate and therefore the highest mark you can get in each of the following tasks falls into that mark band. If you have a complex problem and have done the job well you will fall into the 10 to 12 marks on the analysis. If you have a complex problem but the evidence is less well structured then it will be the 7 to 9 marks. As mentioned previous, if you get a complex problem this opens up the maximum number of marks of 12 for you. You may have an adequate problem, an adequate complex analysis, the maximum mark you can get is 9, the minimum is 4 and this is based on this evidence. If you get marked as an adequate complex problem the maximum marks you can get on the following sections is in this mark band so a maximum of 9 marks on a 12 mark section if your project is limited then you fall into this mark band and that mark band limited problems can have a maximum of six marks again if your project is said to be limited you are limiting your mark for the rest of the sections and the last section is a simple problem simple problems give a maximum mark of three so bear that in mind everybody should be aiming for a complex problem and after discussion this should be clear what a complex problem is. Looking at the, the grid then, you'll be marked on each of these points. You'll be marked on your background and problem identification. This will include a description of the organisation, of the group, of the person, the people that you're doing your project for. How many people work there? What sort of work do they do? Who is your main contact? This section describes the actual problem itself. For example, a problem may be that a company is struggling to produce rotors and organize their staff correctly. A problem of another company could be that they can't keep up with all their orders uh, because it's such a laborious task of taking orders and keeping track of stock control. These could be problems. If you're doing a project for a school library, you'll need to describe the school, the library, and possibly explain who uses the library. The description of the current system. What you need to do is describe the current system and the environment in which it's used. Describe the ways that computers are being used, if there are any computers. If the current system works well, then there is unlikely to be a real need for a computerized system or a new computerized system so you need to indicate what are the problems with the current system talk through the process for example if you're producing a system on um, a news agent and delivery rounds talk through what happens from the moment somebody walks into the news agent and says they want newspapers being delivered what is recorded how is it recorded what is this recorded on have you got copies of this have you took photographs that you can make reference to? What is completed? For example, they might need their name, their telephone number, their address, what newspaper they'd like delivering, what kind of form is this written on? How is this then added to the rotor for the newspaper's delivery? How are newspapers assigned to different paper girls and paper boys? What happens if someone doesn't get their paper delivered? What happens in order to, to build them? the people. You need to talk through step by step every item of data that is used. The way that you're going to find this out are clear interviews. The next section, identify the prospective users. You may have more than one type of user that will be using your system. For example, if you are writing a library database for your school, you may have two sets of users, the librarian, the pupils. There may even be staff you should make it clear what different roles they have and give some indication of how many people are involved and what they currently use the current system for. In the user's needs and limitations you need to identify what are the needs of each of your group user type. You've already identified for your users so for each group 
You need to find out more about what they want. What do they want the system to do? What do they need it to do? This can be based on the results of your interviews, the research so far, questionnaires you've done. You may need to go back and ask further questions. There are likely to be areas that you may not cover within the scope of your project, although it is important that your system will meet the needs of the user. You should list any anticipated limitations. These are likely to cover the amount of data your system can cope with and extra features that may be added later, for example being available over the internet, being multi-user. Indicate any constraints that the user has, such as are they constrained to a certain piece of software or certain hardware? Are there any time constraints, user knowledge and so on? Data sources and destinations. All the data that goes into the system must come from somewhere. Whether it is customer orders, invoices, scores from a sporting event, books in a library. List the different sources where data comes from, what format is the data in and how is the data going to end up in the system. And list any output that's expected. Add quantities, for example, 20 of these are going to be produced per month, one of these produced per week. How is it going to be output as well? Is it going to be a printout in a letter? Is it going to be email? Is it going to be a picture, screen, graph, report? Data volumes. For each data input and output, indicate their quantity and regularity. 20 letters to customers per month. You may also need to indicate the volume of data being processed. For example, if you're creating a piece of math software for teachers to use to simulate a countdown game, you'll need to say how many times a day the software performs its calculations. Make an estimate of file size required, number of records, how much data storage space. Data Dictionary contains information about the database, about the data. The Analysis Data Dictionary is a place to add all the descriptions, definitions of all the data that is currently used in the current system. What are all the entities? For example, uh, it could be a mark sheet, it could be a current order form. What are the fields associated with these? For an order form, it might be date, it might be product to be ordered, product code, quantity, total. For each of these, what would the data type be? String, integer, what would an example be? Are there any related fields across these? See the examples on Moodle of data dictionaries. You'll have to produce a series of DFDs. These need to be context diagrams and level 1s. One of the most important parts of the analysis is the objectives section. Objectives will be a numbered list of points that you would like your project to meet. These are agreed with your clients. What is it that they want? So you're going to use these objectives in two ways. One of them to design the project and the other is at the end of the project to carry out your evaluation. They need to quantify and qualify. For example, to quantify the database must be able to hold 8000 records. There are currently 6,000 customers and that is assuming that we increase by 200 customers each year. It needs to be available to work in 10 years time. To qualify means to describe something by listing its characteristics. The user must find it easy to work through the process in three steps. Remember, objectives need to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timed. The complexity is what is agreed with your tutor, how complex is your problem and that relates back to what we looked at at the beginning. The last two, potential solutions and proposed solutions, are saying what are the potential ways to solve your project. It could be done in VB alone, could be console, could be form based programming, could be a database application, could be done online, could be done through HTML, PHP, C Sharp. Talk about the different methods, justify uh, pros and cons of each and then for your proposed solution you put forward what you are going to do, why you're going to do this, how this relates to your objectives and what you want to do next. This needs to be signed off in the way that your client has agreed this is how you move forward. This is then your analysis documentation complete.